Burnett. Here. Gray. Here. Jerome. Here. Stothard. Here. Thompson. Here. Festerson. Here. Mr. President. Here. Uh, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for our invocation by Councilmember Thompson. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to give more reflection than a, a typical prayer. And uh, this, this past Sunday, I visited with uh, a Baptist church in north, the north side, and I heard a preacher say that uh, we don't live in a perfect country, but it's still one of the best ones. The statement put me in a contemplative frame of mind as we head into our midweek celebration of our, our country's birthday celebration. And uh, we're all aware of the typical freedoms that we enjoy, such as the freedom of speech and expression, freedom of assembly and protest, freedom to worship, freedom to vote. Then there are those, some of those privileges that we enjoy that other people around the world don't enjoy. Um, my wife and I recently went to Costa Rica and we were uh, surprised to see that 40% of them did not have indoor plumbing, about 50% of the roads weren't paved, and about 80% of them did not have air conditioning. And even here in America, there are some things that we take for granted, such as uh, the freedom of physical and social mobility. And this is a country where you can change the alignment of your stars, and I'm a witness to that because I started off at a far, far much poor and disadvantaged spot where I'm at today. And then lastly, we even get some, uh, some clue of how fortunate we are by our entertainment choices. I was looking at the uh, newspaper today for the movies, and one of the movie choices is Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America can you read about a boy who overcame poverty, then went on to law school, then became president. But before he became president, he took time out to rid the country of vampires. <laughs> <laughs> then he freed the slaves, and for all that, he got assassinated. <laughs> uh, on a more serious note, I'm proud to be an American. And just like the preacher said, I too uh, don't want to live anywhere else but here. So let us remember the freedom, that freedom doesn't come, bec that doesn't come cheap and that there are many men and women in uniform who fight to preserve our freedoms and they deserve our utmost respect during this holiday week. For these things and other blessings not mentioned, we give thanks to the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord and God bless America. City Clerk certified publication on the daily record on June 29th yes. for a free council and regular city council meeting July 3rd. 2012. A current copy of the Open Meetings Act is posted in white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome. This Omaha City Council meeting is conducted in public and by law <clears throat> may only address the topics listed on the published agenda. The council will hear testimony but will not engage in debate of issues with the public during the meeting. During testimony, it is not appropriate to applaud or convey disapproval. These actions only detract from the formal decorum of the meeting. At this time, please turn off or mute any electronic device. Mr. Clerk. Uh, we'll take items five through eight as one case. Five has an amendment, so we'll have to vote on that separately. Five is an ordinance to approve a major amendment to a mixed-use development agreement for Vintage Oaks to amend the Vintage Oaks mixed-use agreement to approve an updated site plan and updated agreement located northeast 168th and Harrison Streets. A, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval, and B is an amendment. Six is resolution preliminary plat entitled Vintage Oaks is hereby approved. A, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval, and seven is the replat transmitted herewith entitled Vintage Oaks Replat 42 uh, is hereby approved. A, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Eight is resolution subdivision agreement uh, between the city and Walmart Real Estate Business Trust is hereby approved. The public hearing on agenda item, items number five, six, seven, and eight begin now. Are there any proponents? Yes, Mr. President, members of the Council, Larry Jobin, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the applicant, which is Walmart Corporation. The approvals that are before you today will allow for another neighborhood market, 41,000 square feet, to be located at the north east corner of 168th and Harrison. So with that, I'm here to answer questions. Also, Trish Rothy of Kimley Horn, the consulting engineers, is here with me as well to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? 
Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. The amendment on five. Do we have a second? Yeah. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothert? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothert? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Five is passed as amended seven to zero. Now six through eight. Motion Roll call. Garnett? Gray, yes. Jerem, yes. Stothard, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Mr. President. Yes. They're all adopted seven to zero. Item number nine, resolution of preliminary plot entitled One Love First Edition, located at 7052 Dodge Street, Long. Attached conditions hereby accepted. Preparation of final plat is hereby authorized. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number nine begins now. Are there any proponents? Yes, Mr. President, members of the council, Jeff Lake, 2111 South 67th Street, on behalf of the applicant, here to answer any questions you might have about this project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lake. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. Mr. Lake, just a couple questions for you. So this is a redevelopment right near 72nd and Dodge, right near uh, the new plan, Urban Village for Crossroads. Mm -hmm. So we're especially attuned to that appearance and how things will develop there as we continue to, to uh, work towards that plan. Can you talk a little bit about the site development here and, and specifically what this will do in terms of improvements to the site and landscaping and things of that nature? Absolutely, sure. Uh, for the record, Jeff Lake, 2111 South 67th Street. Uh, I've got uh, probably the first thing to respond to that is to show a picture of the color elevations. Uh, first off, backing up a little little history on the site, this is for, formerly uh, the Family Fun Center site. It went through foreclosure and is owned by uh, Mutual Omaha, or excuse me, um, uh, Premier Bank, formerly Mid-City Bank. They've got an agreement with um, CSRS and Raising Canes. They're kind of a joint partnership on that prospect to uh, take down that property, um, split it into two parcels, and uh, build on the west one immediately. They do have a purchase agreement, uh, I think, pending for the east half of the lot. I'll show that, uh, actually, I'll show that site first. This is the parcel um, currently housing the former Family Fund Center. Plan is to raise that all down, demo it, clean up things such as um, overhead electric lines, bring in a, a um, site plan that's been through the urban design review process, has been blessed with, uh, with building materials and landscaping. And then uh, I've got an example of, of what the elevations look like. I'll show the front elevation first, front and side. So this, um, this elevation on the front, uh, the top side is the, uh, the front view that would be seen from um, 72nd Street. The uh, one on the left is the view that's on the, uh, the left side. And then um, showing the other two sides of the building. You'll notice even the back side is four-sided architecture. Uh, it's one of the items we worked through with the uh, planning department. There were some EFIS materials. It's been switched predominantly. It's a little hard to tell on the, uh, the site, but this is predominantly brick, this sort of um, more tan color and the more, I suppose, beige, maybe a little colorblind here is more of a stucco type fascia. So four-sided architecture. Um, it did go through Urban Design Review Board in May and uh, was approved for both landscaping materials. Okay. And you don't know what's going to happen to the eastern side of the property yet? At this point, no. They do have an LOI that's been transferred back and forth. Um, I believe there will be an announcement on that in the next probably um, month, I would guess. And neither property uh, party is looking for any sort of TIF financing, so they would be adding uh, new valuation to this, uh, this area without um, asking for anything in return from the city from, from uh, assistance on financing. Okay. And some green space for trees, or how will that play out? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay, so this is the uh, the west side of the uh, the property. If we can get it on the uh, screen there as well. So here's the site plan. I mentioned the footprint. This is the dodges to the south. Uh, we've got trees around it. We've got green space in around the uh, plaza area and vehicular circulation around the outside, uh, and also uh, working with the um, city planning department on uh, what our setbacks are off of um, off of the street between green space and sidewalks, and then additional buffers for landscaping and green space. This is an ACI overlay district. Uh, we ad adhere to all those items. The uh, reason we went to Urban Design Review Board 
when you're in ACI 2, um, you do have to, if you have any sort of parking or paving between the building and the street, you do have to go to the design review board for approval, which we had uh, completed that step. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Cunningham, just one question for you too. Mr. Lake mentioned the ACI 2, and that's coming later on our agenda, I think, for a subsequent meeting. But this does fully comply with the ACI 2 expectations as an overlay? Rick Cunningham, Planning Director, yes it does. And then just a word about the digital signage. At this, at this site, there had been a very large video game that was digital signage, I think grandfathered at one point, but very unsightly for the neighborhood and for that major commercial corridor. That could not reoccur occur here or elsewhere, could it? No. Uh, Oops, I'm sorry. Are you asking me or? Um, whoever would like to field the question. I, I will say that no, we would not allow that, or we would fight it very vigorously to have that occur. So. Thank you. We're quite happy that the sign that was there is gone. I, I would agree. <laughs> I do have a, a picture of what the monument sign does look like, was okay. proposed. If we can get back to the, uh, to the screen. The center image right through here is the monument sign. Uh, I believe it meets all the current landscaping uh, requirements and um, signage codes to date, and that sign, as Mr. Cunningham said, is down and does not plan on returning. Great. Thank you. With that, I'll go ahead and move approval. Okay. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerome? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. It's adopted 7 to 0. <laughs> Item number 10, resolution of preliminary flat entitled Westplex Lot 5, located at 1010 North 102nd Street, is hereby accepted. Preparation final plat is hereby authorized. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 10 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any? Um, I'm Jane Olson with um, Stan Olson Auto Group, and we own the property that is directly south next to this property and we have a current drainage easement on that property and we are okay with them subdividing the property as long as our drainage easement stays intact. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerome? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Adopted 7 to 0. Item 11, 12, and 13 is one case. Resolution of the preliminary plat entitled Brer Hills Replat 6, located southwest of 168th Street and Western Avenue. On attached conditions, thereby accepting preparation of final plat is hereby approved. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. And 12 is the replat is hereby approved. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. And 13 is the subdivision agreement is hereby approved. Public hearing on agenda items number 11, 12, and 13 begin now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Adopted 7 to 0. Item number 14, resolution and preliminary plat entitled Pacific Point. Estates, Replat 3, located north of 194th Avenue and Walnut Circle, along attached conditions, hereby accepted and preparation of final plat is hereby authorized. A planning board and planning department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 14 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Mr. President. Yes. It's adopted 7 to 0. Liquor, item number 15, Bravo Cuisina Italiana, 17151 Davenport Street. Class I liquor license, new application, new location. 16 is the catering license for the same applicant at the same location. Public hearing on agenda items number 15 and 16 begin now. Are there any proponents? Good afternoon. My name is Chris Hardy. I'm the general manager, Bravo Cucina Italiana at Village Point. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Garnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerome? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Adopted 7 to 0. 
Item number 17 is snack attack at 2938 North 108th Street. Package liquor license, new application, old location. You have a request from their attorney for a two-week layover to July 17th and continue the public hearing. So moved. Roll call. Kernat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. And Jerem passes the second time for a potential conflict of interest. It is adopted 601 passing. Item number 18, Keystone Tavern, 7821 Military Avenue. Catering liquor license, new application, old location, they presently hold a Class C liquor license. Public hearing on agenda item number 18 begins now. Are there any proponents? Yep. I have Tim Lewis on number item 18. Tim Lewis, 7821 Military Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska representing Keystone Tavern, TSL, Blue Duck Hospitalities. Proponent, Suzanne Buck, owner, Keystone Tavern, 7821 Military Avenue. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Second. Roll call. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Approved seven to zero. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council because I have placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed consent agenda shall be taken out by the city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items numbers 19 through 23 were held on June 26, 2012. Roll call. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Uh, 19 through 23 are passed 7 to 0, and we have a request to remove 31 from the resolution consent agenda. Gary? Gurnett? The public hearings on agenda items number 24 through 29 and 31 through 40 are today. He, he wanted 31 off, right, Gary? Excuse me. 31. 24 through 30, 32 through 40 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. Good afternoon, I'm Jan Cal, Cartland Workforce Solutions, 4383 Nicholas. Um, the item is number 38, um, to purchase equipment for the One Stop Career Center. And you are a proponent. Yeah. A proponent. proponent. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Grenat? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerem? Yes. Stothard, yes. Thompson, yes. Festerson, yes. Mr. President. Yes. They're all adopted seven to zero. Now, item number 31 is resolution of the program agreement between the city of Omaha and the Nebraska <coughs> Department of Roads uh, for the 24th Street Road Diet comprising a restriping of 24th Street between L and Leavenworth Street to bring the roadway to a three lane section with directional bike lane to include nodes, construction and streetscape enhancements is hereby approved. Public hearing on agenda item number 31 is today. Begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any proponents? Opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Grenant. Mr. Stubbe, would you be so kind to explain to our audience, both here and out in TV land, uh, uh, what this actually is and reassure those uh, along the 24th Street corridor from Leavenworth to L that uh, there won't be bulldozers out there tomorrow morning. Uh, Bob Stubbe, Public Works. Uh, this is a, uh, a project essentially to consider a road diet on 24th Street from L to Leavenworth Street and typically what that consists of would be a reduction of the current four and five lane road section to a three-lane road section, which would be a one lane each direction with typically a center uh, turn lane. Uh, it also includes um, improvements to other 
modes of transportation which may consist of bicyclists and pedestrians. So uh, consideration would be given to installing bike lanes. Uh, consideration would be uh, to include um, potentially some bump outs at the at some intersections to allow for a shorter distance for pedestrians to be able to cross the streets. Uh, this essentially is a kind of an interlocal agreement that uh, with the Department of Roads because we did make a request for federal funding. So this is a shared project between Department of Roads and uh, City of Omaha. Um, this is essentially the first step in, in moving forward towards um, this particular project. And outreach was uh, started uh, oh, a while ago to the local neighborhood alliances and associations that are abutting uh, this particular corridor. Is that correct? I believe so. In fact, we do have somebody in the audience uh, that might be able to address some of those public outreaches that we did have. Carlos Morales from the Planning Department probably could address some of those questions. Carlos, would you mind coming? Just identify yourself. Mm -hmm. Carlos Morales, City of Omaha, Bicycle Pedestrian Coordinator. Um, as part of the project along 24th Street, we partnered, uh, City Planning has partnered with uh, the Douglas County Health Department and we're conducting a, currently conducting an HIA, which is called the Health Impact Assessment. Basically, we take projects, policies, or programs, and we look at what their health effects are. Uh, we knew that the city applied for federal funds for this project, and so we're going out to the community and trying to figure out what's most important to the community in terms of health. And that's where we are thus far. Uh, we've outreached to uh, local businesses uh, as well as uh, neighborhood associations and people that are involved in and around 24th Street. Uh, we're kind of in the midst of it uh, thus far. Some of the main concerns we've heard uh, are with regards to speeding and traffic safety. Uh, so that's it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stubbe, just uh, um, this is, as you said, the first step so public input can still uh, be forthcoming uh, regarding this uh, very large project. Absolutely. We will still uh, welcome input from uh, uh, neighborhood associations, businesses that are along that particular stretch. Uh, typically when we utilize federal funds in projects, uh, there is a, a requirement to have some type of a public meeting to gather input uh, relative to this project. So with that said, I make a, a motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Jerem. At least the northern part of this uh, study area w is in District 3. And um, one of the reasons I got a call on this earlier today and said, oh, I heard on the news you're going to spend a million dollars today on this. And I said, no, we're gonna, if it approved today, it would spend about 275 in terms of that 275,000 to study it with input that this particular person and everyone else would have the opportunity to provide. But in looking at this area, I think that it is worthy of study and what we can do to address how the traffic flows through there and alternatives, um, especially in light of the recent past and the well-documented speed issues there. and the loss of a valued member of the um, staff of the Building Commission who was tragically killed uh, in that stretch at 24th Street. So I would just point that out to colleagues that, um, you know, consider it maybe something that, in studying this, that maybe his family would appreciate that we're looking at the issues and how traffic flows through that area. So I would join in supporting the motion. We have a motion and a second, correct? Yes. Roll call. Gurnett? Yes. Gray? Yes. Jerome? Yes. Stothard? Yes. Thompson? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Adopted 7 to 0.
Pursuant to City Council Rule 7, if agenda item number 41 should be laid over three weeks for publication and public hearing. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, due to no meeting being held July 10th, the third reading of public hearing on agenda items number 42 through 47 shall be held on July 17th. Pursuant to City Council Rule 7H, the third reading on agenda items number 48 through 58 shall be held on July 17th. The public hearing on these items are today. Items 48 through 55 are the annexation package. We'll read them all up and take one public hearing. If anybody wishes to testify, would they please identify the uh, agenda item number or the SID? Item 48 is ordinance to extend the limits of the City of Omaha over certain lands in Douglas County, Nebraska, incorporating the same into the, making the same a part of the City of Omaha, located southeast of 156th and West Maple Road, SID 370. Item 49 is east of 156th Street and Rolling Ridge Road, Walnut Lake, SID 414. Item 50 is located northwest of 132nd and 4th Street, Standing Bear, SID 416. 51 is located northeast of 147th Street and West Maple Road, Hillsborough Plaza, SID 440. Item 52, located southwest of 132nd and 4th Streets, uh, Pegasus, uh, SID 447. Item 53, located northwest of 156th and Q Streets, Lakeview Heights and Chimney Ridge, SID 244. Item 54 is located northeast 156th and West Dodge Road, Pepperwood, SID 300. Item 55 is located southwest 144th and F Streets, the colonies and adjacent areas, SID 330A, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on agenda items number 48 through 55 are today. Are there any proponents? Mr. President, members of the council, Gary Hall from the Planning Department. I'm here today to ask for your approval of the 2012 annexation package. It consists of eight SIDs that include 6,353 residents, 742 acres of land, and $405 million in real estate and property value. In terms of land use, three SIDs contain a total of 37.2 acres of commercial development. Seven of the areas contain a balance of low and high density residential and civic uses. The annexation passes the test of being fiscally positive, positive over the next 10 years. It is consistent with city annexation policies, the city's master plan, and state annexation laws. We have a planned effective date of August 27th. And with that, I would ask, respectfully ask for your approval and would uh, entertain any questions you have. Thank you, Gary. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Ordinance on second reading, item number 57. Ordinance to approve an amendment to the Exarban Apartment Tax Amendment Financing Redevelopment Agreement uh, to remove, what? No, 56. Oh, I'm sorry, 56. Ordinance to amend that part of section one of ordinance number 28378 uh, pertaining to the annexation of the City of the Omaha, uh, Lake Cunningham Park, Dam Site 11. A Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on agenda item number 56 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? I'm trying to get them done here. Public hearing is closed. Now ordinance on second reading item 57, ordinance to approve an amendment to the Exarban Apartment uh, tax and financing redevelopment agreement uh, to remove the area to approve the Exarban Apartment 2 LLC tax and financing redevelopment loan agreement, which contemplates the use of tax and financing for the redevelopment site at 2121 South 64th Plaza. Public hearing on agenda item number 57 begins now. Are there any proponents? Bridget Hadley, City Planning, here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Bridget. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 58, ordinance to accept the bid of FBG Service Corporation to furnish custodial services at various recreational facilities for the Parks, Rec, and Public Property Department. Public hearing on agenda item number 58 begins now. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Oh, come forward, please. 
Please state your uh, name and address. Yes, my name is Colin Brown, uh, 16433 Sherwood Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska, and I'm here representing uh, LP Custodial and Supply Company. Um, I, I just basically we're here just to try to get an understanding um, of this this bid uh, came in several months ago at uh, a much higher price. Um, and since then, uh, the bid was changed to add on two additional uh, services to the overall bid. And the present company uh, on 58 came in two months later at $140,000 cheaper than their first bid. And LP Custodial um, is basically here just trying to get an understanding um, with the council here of how does that work um, in the sense of how does how does our company compete in this um, when a, another company can come in like this and do as I said um, and ultimately you know I'm not here of winning the bid or not getting this particular bid right now that's that's not here or there but for future references, how do we do that? How do we compete with that? That a company can come in here and do that. Um, it just it throws our company out of the running, uh, our piece of pie here in Omaha. So um, we wanted to voice that. Um, also, um, with with this, these how an education of we just want to voice our opinion with the the tiers ones and twos and. Um, Councilman uh, Gray gave me an education on it was more of a bid on it wasn't a bond issue which uh, Lee Penkowski which is the owner of LP custodial um, was under the impression it was a bond issue but it was more um, of a capacity issue um, so we're just we just as a company here in Omaha just need to know um, we want to work with the council uh, on this and, and how we do business here in Omaha. So I just wanted to voice um, those two. So you want to better understand the bid process? Is that not 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 the bid process? Um, okay. Pardon me. It, uh, it, is that all you had? Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. President. I just, um, and I wanted to let Colin know we had a conversation early on, and he represents Lee Pankowski. She's the lady uh, that won the contract to do our libraries. And um, we had something, we had a couple of things that happened. I wish the other, I wish the company was here, though, because I would want to know how they, how we add, um, how we add things to it, and their bid comes in $140,000 less than it did the first time. Yes, sir. I, I did want to ask a question or two about that. <laughs> but what happened here primarily is, um, and Marsden said early on that, you know, once the bids are open and everybody knows what everybody has, that these kinds of things can happen. And our council vice president shared with us the same thing. That's the risk we run when we reject bids. Um, but what happened here more had to do with, um, we were on, when the bid was let the first time, it was a tier one, tier two only bid. And so only tier ones and tier twos can bid. Uh, there were a couple of companies that weren't tier one, tier two. One of them got the contract, which is why we ended up, uh, as a council, ended up throwing it out as the first time. The second time they opened it up because in the first bid, there were only two, and this is from my colleagues too, there were only two tier one, tier two bidders. And so the assumption was made, first of all, that Lee didn't have the capacity, which I don't think we should have done. And then secondly, uh, we opened it up with a 20% set aside for mm -hmm. tier one, tier two contractors. So, um, and what Lee was planning to do was, that she had worked with a number of other tier one, tier two contractors and they were going to, that's how the capacity was going to be sustained with other tier one, tier two contractors. We just didn't know that it's kind of a loophole in our ordinance, and Heather, Heather, uh, Heather Tippy Pierce and I and a number of others are going to get together and talk through some of that because uh, it was it doesn't happen often, but it happened once, and um, we just need to revisit it and maybe do some sort of an amendment to the uh, emerging small business ordinance. But that's still we still have to sit and talk about that. 
and figure out how to do it better. But those are the things that happened. There were some assumptions that were made that were wrong, um, and um, and so and we ended up going in another direction, which probably we shouldn't have done. But we're there now. But I can't blame the department because. Um, we followed the procedures in the ordinance. I mean, that's right. exactly what and, we did. And, and I'm we not followed the procedures blaming in the ordinance. anybody or pointing fingers. Yeah. We just wanted more of an understanding. Yeah, we followed the procedures, but we have, and what we have essentially is is a good problem. We've got a number of companies that are starting to build capacity a lot faster than we thought they were. So that's a good problem to have. We just need to figure out how to how to work it into the ordinance or, or how to make it part of an ordinance or not make so many assumptions when we start off. So. Um, probably be supporting this contract, um, although I did have some questions and I wish the contractor were here to talk about how he went from, how they went from one price to $140,000 under it, even though we added an 18,000 square foot uh, recreational facility and we added tiles to all of the yes. work that we were doing. I, I, I don't see how you could come up with $140,000 difference, but we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll 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 ask kind when we we'll ask when we approve when we get ready to approve the contract on the 17th. Appreciate it. But thank you though, and I and th those that, those were the circumstances that 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 led us to this point. Well, thank you, thank you, Council. And I did I leave anything out, Brooke? I think I okay. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, uh, pursuant to City Council Rule Seven H, uh, the third reading of public hearing agenda items number 59 through 62 shall be held on July 24th. Pursuant City Council Rule 7H, the second reading of public hearing on agenda items 63 through 65 shall be held on July 17th. Motion to go ahead and discuss this. Second. Roll call. Jer uh, Gurnett. Yes. Gray. Yes. Jerem. Yes. Stothard. Yes. Thompson. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. We will now go into executive session to only discuss contract negotiations. Yes.